This is Witchspace News for Friday the 4th of March 2022 I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week The Thargoids continue their assault in the bubble There's unique rewards in the Colonia Bridge Finale CG our thoughts on the future of Elite following the Frontier Community Meet and the latest Frontier development news and what to expect from Carrier Interiors and Update 11 which is arriving early next week. To make sure you don't miss any of our videos hit like and subscribe and remember to click the little bell icon and select all notifications and if you'd like to help directly support this channel you can also join our Patreon via the link in the video description. The regular Thargs Day server tick this week saw the resumption of Thargoid attacks inside the bubble. Currently there are two systems under Thargoid incursion in the bubble and one station on fire and in need of evacuation with a further two systems under incursion in the Witch Head sector. Check your Galnet newsfeed in ship for information on what targets to head to and to get involved with the communities that deal specifically in anti-xeno operations, station repairs and station evacuations you'll find links in the video description. It's too early currently to determine any pattern to the Thargoid bubble incursions if indeed there is one but we'll be watching closely to see if the intergalactic monster marigolds get any closer to Sol. With the Thargs Day tick there also arrived the final part of the Brewer Corporations Colonia Bridge community goal this week and, being the finale, it comes bundled with multiple special rewards. The top 75% of participants in the goal this week will each receive a unique single engineered overcharged 3A power plant. This power plant is engineered to such a degree that it's not possible via any means in game to replicate the engineering that's being applied to it even with experimental effects. The top 75 will also receive what Frontier are calling emissive exploration decals in red, white and blue. And there are Brewer Corporation themed decals in bronze, silver and gold for higher tiers of participation for this weeks commanders. And further to all of that Frontier announced that anyone who has participated in any part of the Colonia Bridge community goals up to this point will receive a special commemorative decal with which to adorn their ships. As of this recording the community goal is proceeding at quite a dramatic pace and it's highly likely that it will not last the weekend so if you're going to jump in don't wait. As we reported last week, last Friday Frontier hosted the Elite Dangerous Community Meet and Greet event in Cambridge which saw around 100 commanders, us included, meeting up with the Frontier community management team as well as a cluster of the games developers. We talked about the event and what went down on our regular Monday livestream this week. The specific point in that livestream you'll find linked below but in summary whilst no one from Frontier was able to speak about anything specific happening behind the scenes right now after chatting with Arthur Tolmy, Dav Stott and Derin Halil we left the event much more confident about the future of Frontier and Elite Dangerous than we went in. Elsewhere in Frontier news this week David Braben was quoted in a Financial Times article lamenting the current vogue for game development and publishing houses to be swallowed up in large acquisition deals saying that allowing Frontier to go that way wouldn't make sense at the moment and adding that the shares held by both himself and his wife act as a natural barrier to such actions. Another positive move this week saw FDev appointing a new non-executive director to its board with the arrival of Ilsa Howling. Non-executive directors don't get involved in the day to day running of a company but instead act almost as a consultant providing impartial criticism and guidance contributing more to an overall strategy for a company. And it's worth noting that Ilsa's background comes from time spent as the head of digital marketing and communication at the BBC and she led the Freeview terrestrial digital television platform in the UK as the managing director. Ilsa is bringing some strong consumer facing experience with her according to the stock market announcement which is encouraging to hear. Also given her background in TV J. Michael Straczynski penned Elite Dangerous Netflix series When asking for a friend. 
Alongside this, Frontier still has a recruitment call out for a senior game designer to work on Elite Dangerous. The job posting states, quote, the role will involve designing, planning and ensuring the smooth delivery of events and content that can help bring the story arcs of Elite Dangerous to life for our players. Understanding how to make a story well told using in-game events you will push for high quality content that matches short term goals and aligns with the long term vision for both the game and the universe of Elite." Unquote. It's clear from that statement alone that as far as Frontier is concerned Elite Dangerous is not going away anytime soon and they clearly have plans for more story going forward and to use their words quote a long term vision for both the game and the universe of Elite unquote. Whatever the reason for FDev's continued mostly silent approach to all things Elite Dangerous currently it's worth noting that at the start of every week Frontier produces a weekly schedule publicising their livestreams. They stream a different game from their stable every afternoon except Thursday ...the slot that is traditionally taken up by Elite Dangerous. That slot is still left blank in the schedule we assume waiting for Elite Dangerous to have its ducks lined up and ready to return. One further point of note ...it's possible that the continued silence from Elite Dangerous is linked to the release of the company's financial results to the stock market. If that's the case and it's a big if then we'd anticipate that they may be looking to return to the megaphone proper around mid April 6 weeks prior to the end of year results being published to the stock market. That being a fairly standard lead time to prep those results for publication. Frontier announced this week that the much anticipated update 11 is currently scheduled to arrive in the game next week on Tuesday the 8th of March. As Frontier are continuing their policy of mostly not talking about Elite Dangerous we know next to nothing about the patch or what versions of the game it will or won't be touching. It was the plan before Christmas to include fleet carrier interiors for Elite Dangerous Odyssey in patch 11 and community manager Bruce Garrido did note this week on the forums that he was looking forward to seeing carrier jumps from inside the carrier. So we can deduce from that at least that the long awaited fleet carrier interiors do seem to be part of update 11 still but we assume until the patch notes arrive on patch day Frontier aren't saying anything else. At the beginning of February we highlighted in a dedicated video what to expect from fleet carrier interiors but in case you missed it here's a rundown of what we expect to see introduced to Elite Dangerous Odyssey next week. Carrier owners will have the opportunity to host a Pioneer Supplies franchise on their fleet carrier. This carrier specific version of the galaxy's favourite arms dealer will be guaranteed to supply at least one of everything they're capable of selling with the carrier owner having the option to disable the selling of restricted items like e-breaches. A Vista Genomics outlet is further being made an option for carrier owners. It's thought that this outlet will operate in exactly the same way as the starport and station version of the interstellar fungus obsessed science shop. And the shipyard module will be an interior version of whatever exterior shipyard services the carrier offers but it's the bar area that perhaps holds one of the more radical and intriguing additions to carrier functionality. The barkeeper will act as a host for some form of player to player odyssey on foot material trading. Exactly how this system will work or what specific materials will be tradable is a complete unknown at the moment as Frontier aren't yet saying. However it certainly has the potential at least to make the engineering of Odyssey's suits and weapons more accessible to more people. Carrier owners and their teammates will have exclusive access to the bridge and ready room lounge overlooking the huge panoramic windows that look out over the carrier landing pads and the jump sequence will be fully viewable from inside the carrier. Carrier interiors will also feature your own NPC crew members and we believe functional seating will now operate on board the carriers both away from and during a jump. Further the carrier interior space and lighting can be themed in some regard by the owner. We're assuming this customization will be an ARC's purchasable feature but again it's not been specifically stated either way. 
How all the new features are added to existing carriers remains a mystery currently. If they are required to visit a dry dock system as is the case with external upgrades to services then adding something like a Vista Genomics for example will prove extremely problematic at the very least for those carriers at permanent anchorage in the deep black. Exactly the same carriers that would make best use of a feature like Vista Genomics in fact. However things turn out we don't have long to wait. As of this recording we have just 3 full days before carrier interiors are due to arrive. How are you feeling about the future of both the game and Frontier at the moment? Are you planning on pitching into this weeks community goals? Are you helping clear out the Thargoids from the bubble? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.